just kidding. Back a few weeks ago, Pastor Riley and I gathered together, and he said, I've got to go do this wedding up in, well, he said Asheville, but that is where he's at. He's in Charlotte doing a wedding. Uh, but he said, I need you to come and if you don't mind to do the service on the day. And I began to thinking, well, I thought back to that October morning in 1998 and we had these two pews set right in the middle. And they were pretty full. And we were praising and cheering God. But then there was something came along a few years later by the name of Ivan. And may remember Ivan. The cheering stopped, didn't it? We wasn't cheering anything at that time. We wanted to find out just exactly how we were going to get through that mess. And I got to thinking about another time that a great historian wrote about by the name of Gene Smith. He authored a book called When the Cheering Stopped. The book took place in the reign of, of uh, Woodrow Wilson as president and the events surrounding World War I. Upon the end of the war, people were very optimistic. They, uh, they believed that they had seen the last of the wars. This is the great war to end all wars, you heard them say. The dream was that the world had at last been made safe and the way had been paved for, for democracy and freedom everywhere around the world because of World War I. When Woodrow Wilson paid his first visit to Europe, he was greeted by large crowds and he was cheered every place that he went. In many people's eyes, he was the most popular uh, man and the greatest war hero of all times. He was viewed as the icon of hope. <coughs> and all of the cheering lasted just about a year. Then it began to die down. The political leaders throughout Europe were interested more in their, their own agendas than, uh, than a, a lasting peace for the world. And the people slowly lost hope in anything and everything that was going on except right in their little vicinity of life. Wilson met opposition in the Senate. His League of Nations was never ratified. Under tremendous stress, his health began to fail. In the next election, his party lost. Woodrow Wilson, who almost two years earlier was hurled as a hero, came to his last days as a broken and defeated man. History is filled with examples of people out of uh, uh, came out humbly and, and rose to, to great popularity only to fall back down, never to be seen again. Some even wondered, why did this cheering stop? On that Palm Sunday, as Jesus approached Jerusalem, there were several things that he was aware of, and, and you know, he knew the surrounding conditions of the people, and he knew the conditions of every person in that area, their heart, and how they viewed life. The Jews found themselves under heavy Roman oppression. They were heavy tax restrictions, numerous elections by means, or, or excuse me, uh, numerous execution by means of crucifixion. And Jesus knew all about those things. But there's one thing he also he knew. He knew everyone there, their hearts. The Jews were in search of someone who could lead them out. Uh, from under this Roman great uh, powers that they held over top of them. They desired a king, a conqueror, someone who could set them free. Have we ever been in places like that? Please, Lord, set me free from all of this stuff. Come on. 
They had seen the mighty works of this man, Jesus. They had witnessed to him restoring sight to the blind. They saw evidence of him healing the lame. They saw him feed the multitudes with a little boy's lunch and even had leftovers and 12 baskets full of that. They heard about him laser, uh, raising up Lazarus from the dead. They listened to him teach with authority, surely with power and authority like that. This is the great king in whom we have been waiting on. So Jesus came to Jerusalem and the crowds began to hear. The timing was right. It was approaching the Passover time. That was symbolic of the event where the death, death angel passed over Egypt. Pharaoh let God's children go and now, just maybe now, we're free. You can hear them say, free at last. Free at last. God has freed us at last. The Roman soldiers knew that there was something up as well. These soldiers knew that it was Passover. They realized that it was a tradition at a time that brought about skirmishes and violent reactions in the community. They hadn't forgotten several years old, earlier that Theodos of Jordan had written into Jerusalem with a, a similar greeting that... This guy Jesus was going to get now. They remembered how he promised to, to do the miracles of Elijah. He had a fairly large group that was following him. 400 men behind him, prancing in, coming in to claim victorious. Do you remember what happened to him? They cut his head off and hung it on the, on the gates of the city. For everyone to see. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that Sunday morning. People raving palm branches, Brother Bill, all over the place. Taking off their coats and putting it down for him to walk on. Cheering, cheering, cheering. But then, just like with Lord Wilson, it began to happen. Why are we cheering this guy? 